What's up everybody? Welcome back to John's Backyard Garage here. <clears throat> Sorry I haven't posted for a while. I've been uh, super busy with other projects. Let's see here. I uh, I should record this, but I redid the trailer on my boat and then did some stuff inside of my boat here. So, But today is what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, working on my Honda Foreman. So it's not starting. So hang in there and we'll try to get her started. Alright, so as you can see, this thing is just, it's not starting. Most likely the carburetor is clogged, so hang in there for a sec and I will, um, I'll be ripping off the seat and getting her going. So on these Hondas here, you're going to take the seat off, find where the lever is. <clears throat> First thing you're going to do is, you're going to pop the air filter off. I was in here earlier, this actually a couple weeks ago, so I took this off, but this goes on here. It's got a hose clamp, which, oh yep, the hose clamp here. You unscrew that and this pops out. Next we gotta take this off to get the air box out, so give me a minute here. So, okay, before I go too far, I'm gonna check out the gas in here smells good it's not varnished um, I did stabilize it I haven't drove it in a few months so first you're gonna pop these out and then that pulls out Come out. and there's a couple up under you can see it. there's one up under here and then one over here on the opposite side so I'm gonna take those out quick okay now that I have those out this should just come right off but once you know it it doesn't just gotta manhandle a little, little bit Then there's another clip under here. I believe there's one. Well, I guess just that one. So let me take that out. Okay, now that we have that clip out, we're gonna take this. Pull this off. Or at least move it out of the way. There we go. And then here this whole intake it should pull off as well but before I do that I gotta take this screw off here so I can get the intake off of the carburetor so sorry I'm having to hold a camera with one hand so I can get these details here And then also there's a, I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me see if I can get it this angle. There's this hose clamp down here. I gotta take that off as well. So give me a minute. I gotta use both hands for that one, so. 
All right, so now that that is off, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna try to see if I get this started. Let me show you a cheap way. It'll tell you if your carb is clogged or not. Um, so just hold on. So you're gonna turn your key on. You're gonna put your hand right here in front of the carb. Picking back a bunch of fuel, so that's leading me to believe that there's something going on in there. Um, it's either too rich or just something's going on in the carbs. So, furthermore, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get that off all the way. So, give me a minute here. Let me get some tools, and I'll show you how to do that. All right. So, the first thing that we're gonna do is, if you see, there's a band here. It's hard to see, and then right under here. I don't know if it's gonna focus and you can see it. Uh, it's hard to see. But right back in here, there's a screw that goes to that band. So you're just gonna turn that and loosen that up. And that's gonna be able to allow us to take the carburetor off. Okay. Let's see where the screwdriver is. So you're gonna loosen that. And you're gonna take the whole carburetor and just wiggle it out. There we go. That is disconnected here. So next thing you want to do is shut the fuel off, which is over here. Uh, fuel shut off right here. The X is off. That's your uh, reserve, and that's your regular run. Shut the fuel off, and then we gotta disconnect the fuel lines. So, make note of where everything goes. Um, we got these fuel lines right here, just vent hoses, it looks like. Then we got the main fuel line right here, which we're gonna have to take off. Then we're gonna have to take our throttle off, which is, I believe, right here. And then we're gonna have to also take our choke out, which is down there. So, give me a sec here. Right here's my choke. So give me a couple minutes here, let me get my tools and uh, we'll start getting that off. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 14 millimeter here, um, loosen this right here, which is our choke, unspin it, on the top of the carb, it's gonna be this black one. Loosen it up. And that pulls out. That's what your choke looks like. Next, we're going to take this off here which is this this um, flip screw and it's gonna remove this cover so let me do that quick okay I got the screw out and then we're gonna take the cover off just looks like that and then we're gonna disconnect the throttle cable Let's see if I can do this with one hand I'm gonna pull it up That. There we go. Throttle's disconnected. And what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this bottom nut here just enough so this can pull, pull out that little slot. And then there's a couple other uh, connections, and I'll show you those in a sec. Okay, so I got that nut loosened. I'll loosen it up, and then this whole thing unscrews. And as you can see, it drops down. And then you're gonna slide the cable out like that. And then, now all we got left is to disconnect the fuel line. And then there's an electric choke module, dealy bobber thingy on here. Technical names, I know, it's great. But yeah, we're gonna take that off. So give me just a moment here. Um, I gotta use both hands again to get this hose off. I'm just gonna put my my pliers on there, and then take a flathead screwdriver and pry right there to slide it off. You don't want to pinch lines with the, 
the pliers and pull it because you could rip the line. Um, so yeah, that's usually what I do. I just get in there and I pry it with a flat head. So give me a moment, let me get that off. Okay, so now that fuel line is off and then this electric choke module, I was able to trace it back up in under here. Just pull the line and if you look under here, it goes down to this connector here. Disconnect it, pull the line. Just like that, you have the carburetor removed. So now is what we're gonna do is, well first we're gonna let the dogs in because it's hot out and that's what they do. Gotta love them dogs. So let me let them inside and then we'll go back to my garage and we'll start ripping into this carburetor. Lucy. Hi, baby. Yeah. Hi, Dixie. Hi, Mama. Hi, baby. Nope, oh, I'm dirty. Alrighty, now that we're on our workbench, we're all set up and ready to roll. First thing I do is I put some paper towels down to make the work surface clean. First thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen this. Take this out. Alright, so now that we got our work surface all clean, um, we're going to take the carburetor here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this electric choke, we're going to loosen it up. And unscrew it. This thing comes out as a hole. And then the next thing we're going to do is it takes this mixture screw right here. Okay, we're going to take this mixture screw and we're going to count how many turns in we go with it. Half, one, half, two, half, and about two and three quarters ish. So for the sake of this, I know it's got to be set at two and a half. So you're going to put it back to where it is. So we're going to write that down. So I wrote on my thing, I don't mix, two and a half turns out. Then we're going to inspect the needle. It was black. But the thing is, is nothing's broke on it. It's not bent, it's not crooked, it's good to go. So we're gonna set that aside. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop off these hoses here. We're gonna take this one off from the bottom. That one, you could just take it and twist it and then it's gonna slide off. Um, next thing you do is this float ball here. Actually, before we do the float ball, it's gonna be easier. We're gonna take this um, primer knob. When you push on it, I don't know if you hear that. Well, it stopped, but is what it does is it squirts gas into the engine. So we're gonna take that off. Careful, it is spring loaded. Looks like that. Keep the spring and everything together. Set that aside. Keep the, uh, keep the screw with it. Also, um, it's hard to see, but on this needle here, there was a spring. So you want to make sure that you put that spring back on. Don't lose that spring, because that's going to keep tension on it to keep it from backing out and falling out. So Now, we're going to take off the float bowl. The bowl comes out. 
we're gonna look in there it's actually very clean in there so we're still gonna wash it because you can get trash that you can't see and it will definitely cause issues next we're gonna remove this right here just slides off set that aside I gotta grab the right uh, size wrench for this but this unscrews right here it's the main jet take that out don't lose that We're going to take this other jet. There's another jet. I don't know if you can see it down in there. I'll take that out. Looks like this. Take this rubber piece out right here. Put that aside. So give me a minute here and let me get that out. And then also got to grab a pick. So give me one sec here. All right, I'm back. So this right here is a seven millimeter. So you just put it on there and you loosen it. This comes out. I'm not sure if you can see, but let me show you. Let me see if this will focus in. Those little teeny holes. And then there's also teeny holes in this super tiny and then there's also a teeny teeny hole well, actually I guess it's not too small in that so those are what get clogged generally on a carburetor and then you also have little idle ports um, there's one it, it's hard to see in here but there's one down there um, and that's your idle down there and then once you look inside your carp too when you open the throttle you'll see a little bit more on the bottom underneath the uh, plate in there and those are your mid-range and then I took it out and you can't see it but there's a your main range is way back in there and that's your high speed so that's where we're at the next thing that you want to do is you're gonna take a pick or a punch or something And you're going to tap this pin out that's holding this plastic float on. So um, I can't get it with a pick. It's actually pressed in there. So give me a sec here and let me get the right tool. Okay, so this, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to brace the carburetor. You're going to put the tap or punch, in this case a nail. Right on the end of that pin and just tap it out don't beat on it because you don't want to break these off but you just want to tap enough to get this loose to come out and then set that aside this also fell out um, it's a washer and that washer goes on the end of this right here or not washer it, it's a yeah it's just a little piece of uh, rubber, a little rubber o-ring. But it's going to go on the end of this needle. The one that we screwed in counted how many turns out. So that's going to go on there. I'm just verifying. Sometimes they have a washer in there as well, but I don't see an actual washer. So we're good. So after you take that pin out now, is what you're going to do is you're going to slide this out. It's called your float assembly. So when somebody says your float or your, your um, the needle, which is right here, it's a monitoring needle. When somebody says that the floats are stuck, is what's happening is that needle goes into this hole. A lot of times is after stuff sets, gas evaporates and you're left with this crap inside your carburetor. Well, what ends up happening is, is when that gas evaporates, this needle right here, that literally sticks inside of there, which causes no fuel to get to the motor. But on the flip side is if you do get fuel to the motor, 99% of the time is this, anything that was in this bowl or anything that was nasty inside of here 
and just kind of clogged up. <clears throat> Any of that stuff, the new gas actually washes it out and then it gets into all these little holes and ports and then it starts clogging your carburetor. So as soon as I put my hand over that and it sucked in it and my four wheeler started, I knew right away that there was a carburetor issue because something in here, I don't know where, but somewhere in this whole carburetor, something is clogged. So that's why I'm taking it apart. Next thing we're gonna do with it here is gonna we're gonna take this off right here. A good tip, always take pictures of everything. Um, I've worked on a lot of stuff, so I don't necessarily need pictures. And if I get super confused, I do have the manual for my four-wheeler. But it's always a good idea to take pictures of stuff before you start taking it apart so you know exactly where it all goes back together at. So this comes out, set that aside, and then down in there, there's an o-ring. Take that o-ring out, put it back on here so you don't lose it or forget it, and always put the screw back in just so you know where stuff goes. Makes your life a little easier. Last thing we need to take off is the top for the slide. Okay. So after this cap comes off, there's a spring under here, right here, take that spring out, set it aside, then this whole thing right here, it's like a gasket, but it's also part of the slide assembly, pull it out, it's all one big unit. Then you'll see this needle. This can come out, but I'm gonna leave it alone because it's preset, so just leave that alone. But is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look around all around here. I'm gonna hold up to light, and I'm just gonna inspect it and look for tears or rips. Because a lot of times if you have tears or rips, you're gonna have um, issues with your mid acceleration or your high speed. It's because the air is getting in, and this isn't sliding up and allowing um, this right here, which mirrors gas, it's, it's not gonna let this go up. So I'm gonna look at this and make sure this is okay. You don't want to rip it or do anything, but just inspect it. Make sure there's no holes or no uh, cracks or tears. So do that. All right, that is all good to go. So I'm going to double check this and make sure every I have everything taken off. This, it doesn't matter. You can keep this on. There's nothing with that. That just adjusts my idle, how high or low it idles. Um, there's all sorts of ports in here, like one there, one there. There's a teeny one way back in there. Not sure if the camera can pick it up. Um, there's ports back up in here so they're just kind of all over so it's really important that you soak this and you put it in a vibrator or ultrasonic cleaner you can do it by hand but it's it's really it's a lot easier to and I do got to take this off it's a lot easier to use a machine to do it for you but if you're in a pinch you can get some you know carburetor cleaner and spray it down in there and uh just go that route. So is what I'm doing. I'm taking this out because there's one more jet that I got to get to. And that jet is right here. So we're going to take this out as well. Perfect. And as you can see, there's a hole in this one as well. Right there. So. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take all our parts, throw them in the washer. Things with rubber, we're not going to put in there. Um, you can put your screws in. You can put, pretty much put everything in there that you can. Um, as far as the jets and everything go. And then so what I like to do is I like to take the float bowl, put it in here. And I'll take the carburetor as well. And I'm going to put it over in here, which is my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I do have chem dip in there. It's a carburetor additive. It's a carburetor cleaner. I don't want to say additive because it's definitely not an additive. It's just a heavy duty cleaner for carburetors. And I'll show you what that looks like. 
So you can soak just the parts in there. So get them in there. And then I turn the heat on on this. So I'm gonna set the time as high as it will go, which is 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we'll come back and we'll take that out and we're gonna rinse them with water, get them all cleaned up, and then we'll start putting it back together. Um, but that chem dip that I was telling you about is literally right here. It's chem dip. My sonic cleaner takes two gallons, so I use two gallons of it. But that stuff cleans super good. It's super harsh, so make sure that you wear gloves so you don't hurt yourself. I don't usually wear a lot of gloves a lot of the time, so don't do what I do. Always be safe. So uh, I would turn this on, but it really interferes with my phone. So this is what it sounds like. But after 30 minutes, I'll be back and um, we'll check the parts. Alrighty, YouTube friends, we're back now. So we uh, went ahead and got the carburetor, it's all cleaned. And uh, is what I did is after it was in that chem dip, I took it out over to the water hose and I cleaned it out. So now we have the chore, the fun part, putting it back together and seeing if it worked. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the the main needle back in. I'm gonna screw it in. Until it's slightly seated, so you're gonna turn it. I'm turning it like this until it stops. Don't go any turn that because you'll bend that needle. So now we're gonna go out two and three quarters, uh, maybe two and five eighths is what it was at. So right there, half, one, half, two, half and about five eighths ish so that's set that's good to go next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this back in that just screws in use a seven mil tighten her down you put this back in down take this plug put it in the hole take this drops down there tighten it in take this put it in on the side here apologize for the bad angles it would be nice if I had somebody filming this but I don't so tighten that down next we get our float put the needle on it the way this works is it's right here slides up into there and on so it hangs and you'll take your carburetor Slide that in as one assembly. Then we'll take the pin that held it all, start it. Then line it up in the back of this float here. Then slide it through. And we'll see it coming out the other side over here. I'm just going to take a wrench and tap it. Just to keep it from backing out. Then that's set. One way to check it 
is right here is where the fuel goes in and then it goes up and through that needle where it goes. So you're going to want to make sure that's seating correctly. So the best way to do it is to blow into there. No air, I can't blow into it. Flip it upside down. There we go. Not sure if you caught all that. But that's how you test the floats to make sure that they're sticking. Now if you were to go be blown in there like this, you'd have to check and, and air was getting through while it's down. Then most likely that means that you have stuff still on your carburetor and you'll need to clean it out. Um, or replace that needle and needle in there. Next thing, oh, can't forget this. There we go. That goes on right there as well. So don't forget that. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the gasket that we had. Pretty self-explanatory, it lines up. Set it in there. Do not get WD-40 on these, because um, it's what ends up happening. Or, um, sorry, carburetor cleaner. Do not get carburetor cleaner on rubber. It makes it expand, and it will never ever fit again. So, <clears throat> then we're going to take our bowl here, and we're going to put it together. Just like that. Then we'll take our four screws and put them back in. stripped so it was already somebody took a dremel to these because they were stuck in there and made them slotted or flatheads so which is kind of nice of them I should probably do it to that other screw that goes on top here but I'm sure I'll be able to tighten it down if I can't then if I can't get it tightened down then I'll go ahead and get my dremel tool out put a slot in it so I could get a flathead on it I'll tighten this last one down. Then I'm just going to take this, snug them up. You don't want to go super tight, just snug. You don't want to gorilla them on because trust me, they are a pain in the ass to get out and it just it doesn't need it super tight. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to put this on right here. There was no rips or tears in that. <clears throat> and if you look in the carburetor, see that hole this goes down super hard to see this goes down into that hole and then on the top you'll see this tang here lines up with the hole over here make sure that fits which it does <clears throat> and you'll take your spring and put it on then you'll take your cap on the cap it's got that where the spring goes put the spring over the cap and slide it down this is only going to go on one way because these have like a lip on them which corresponds with lips that are in there so it's kind of helpful that way Then I'm going to put the screws in.
there's the stripped one. After all four of those are in, then we're going to go ahead and snug them down. And there we go. You want to make sure the slide is sliding up and coming down. You can, is the way you check it is, you see this hole right up here? You put your mouth on there and then you blow in here, blow into that, kind of like this. And when you blow hard, you'll actually hear it and feel it raising. So you'll know that that's working correctly. You cover the back. I can't tell you, you can't hear it. Maybe you can, but you can feel it lifting. So you know that's working correctly. So, all right, next, what we're gonna do is we're going to put this little primer back on down here. So that just goes down here. This is kind of a pain. the other screw then we're going to stop because we have it backwards let me show you we're hitting right here so this does go on a certain way which when I dropped it I turned it I thought I had it the right way but I didn't so just go slow take your time it's not a race, unless you're in a race and you gotta fix it. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it around, push it back down. There we go. There we go. Now, get the footage of screwing it in. There we go. That's working. Next, we're going to go ahead and put this on here. And there was actually a little jet that where that goes that I probably should have taken out. It goes right here. Whatever, it, it's in there, but it's got an O-ring as well. So I probably should have taken that out as well, but I didn't. Squish it in. Having some issues. I'm trying to watch through the camera and do this so I can make sure that you guys are seeing everything okay. <laughs> and I screw that in. That's good to go. Next, go ahead and put this in. Put it in the right hole. So this is your throttle. You want to set this. 
when you look in there, you see this plate. You want to set this so that's just barely opening. Just, just teeny tiny turning. <laughs> You're going to see a... It's so hard to show you on there, but... Let me see if I can get a good angle. Deep down in there, see if I can push this open with my finger. You see those little holes? You see that first little hole? And then there's there's another set of holes where this lines up at. You want this so when this opens, it's barely showing that teeny hole where the actual plate hits on the bottom. So that's how you set it initially. So for me, I can look in and I can see that that hole is halfway open. So I know that that's set good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on. There's vent tubing. There we go. And I'm going to put the carburetor bowl drain back hose back on. Then the last, but not least, it's going to be this, <clears throat> I said it's a choke, but it's actually, it's not really a choke, it's just like a carburetor heater tube. It, it heats up the carburetor. You notice this thing, it's got a little dent in it, which lines up with this uh, metal mix screw. So you put that there, slide this in, tighten her down. Careful when you're tightening with these. I probably shouldn't be because you could break them. Just be gentle with it. And we'll take your 12, tighten her up. Maybe you gotta get tricky on how you place this stuff. There we go. Perfect. And that, my friends, is one rebuilt carburetor. So let's go back to the four-wheeler and we'll get this thing slapped back on. All right, so we're back here at the four-wheeler. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get these vent tubes put back on. So if this one goes here. This one goes around. So that one's going to go right here. And this vent tube is going to go around over here. And that goes like that. Next thing I want to do is I want to get the throttle cable back on. So let me see if I can hold you guys. So it's pretty much reverse of what I did. I'm going to take this. It's going to slide. Let me see if I can hold everything all at once and do this. Apologize for the shaky camera. Okay, so we're going to take this. It's going to slide it in there, like that. Well, before I do that, actually, put this back in the hole right there, and then tighten that down. So let me use both hands to get that tightened down. Okay, so now that that is tightened down, we're going to lift this up. Take this, put it in a hole. Like that, slide it down. Let me click O. And then everything lines up. So now our throttle's hooked up. Hit the throttle. And we see that it opens. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that choke line and we're going to screw it back in. So, give me just a moment here. So here's the choke line. It's going to go down in here. And we're going to tighten it up. 
So give me one second here. Let me get that tightened up. Okay, I got that all tightened up. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that hose, this one right here, and we're going to put it onto the nipple here for the fuel inlet. Apologize for this shaky camera. There we go. There we go. That's on. Next thing we're going to do is remember this electric choke guy, or keep calling it choke, this carburetor heater. We're going to run it through this grommet down here where it was. And then we're going to hook it back into here. There we go. Now, give me a second here, because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, and we're gonna slide it into there and put that on. So give me one second here. I'm gonna have to use two hands for this, and then I'm gonna get that this uh, strap right here tightened up as well from underneath. So give me one moment. So one thing that I did forget is we gotta put this cover back on the side. So it just slides into here, like that, and then the top goes in, and then we put the screw on up top. Now, we can slide this in. So let me set you up. There you go. And then I'll get that in. I'm gonna do is there's this clip where this uh, cable went. I just gotta tighten it, clip it in. Next is the air filter. So I just slid the air filter onto here. Now we're just going to tighten that up.
and I actually forgot to put that breather hose back on so I gotta dig underneath and get this breather hose back on so let me put that on really quick okay I got the breather hose back on then this goes back down here get this plastic mat back in here slide it back on Okay, we got it back on. Then we're gonna put this grommet back in over here. All right, well, I got all the little grommets in and everything, so it's good to go. Uh, now the next thing to do is just start it up. So give me a minute, let me get you set up, and then we'll try to fire it. Okay, there's the choke, there's the fuel. I'm gonna turn the fuel on. Give me a minute here, I'm gonna get this buttoned up. Um, like I said, the only last thing I gotta put in is this disgusting filter, which I'm ordering one, it's gonna be on the way. Man, this thing is nasty. That slides in here. Take your good old Phillips, put her down in there. And the very last but not least is my cover. These clip up. And then I should be able to crank her up. I gotta get a new battery. I think it's going bad. A new starter. Something like that. now and the very very last thing you can see all right give me a few minutes here I gotta pick up my tools and put them away and then uh, I'll put you up on the stand and we'll take it for a rip thanks watching my video uh, I'll be putting some more online so like and subscribe and I'll uh, talk to y'all later see ya